Hi, welcome to this edition of Spotlight Morris County, the program that brings you news and information from the greater Morris County area. Students at CCM, members of the community, people doing good things. I'm your host, Brenda Todd, and today I'm pleased to have as our guest, Professor Mark Cosgrove. Welcome, Professor Cosgrove. Thank you very much for having me. Professor Cosgrove chairs the Hospitality and Culinary Arts Department here at CCM, and he has come today to tell us about the hospitality programs we offer. Thank you for joining us, and um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be a professor here. Oh, that's great. I actually trained at the Culinary Institute of America as a chef. That's how I got into the chefing side of it. I had worked in hospitality before that in uh, restaurants in Philadelphia. But uh, after I graduated from CIA, I had uh, worked in the industry for uh, large corporations, okay. as well as uh, moving through the ranks of executive chef, chef, unit manager, production manager, all sorts of different titles over a long period of years. Uh, but then uh, the opportunity came up for me to work as a uh, adjunct faculty here at CCM. Okay. And the professor who went on sabbatical never came back. So I was hired oh. full time. And how long ago was that? That was 21 years ago now. Oh, wow. Fantastic. So, for quite a while. so you bring with you a wealth of information. Then. Thank you. That's very kind. Tell us a little bit about the program. Well, we have three different degrees in our program. Hospitality management was the original program that was started back in 1986 under the old style title of hotel and restaurant management. Okay. In 96, we switched it away from that to hospitality management because of changes in the industry and the reflection of how the industry itself had changed. And, and what are some of those changes? Uh, the fact that it wasn't just hotels anymore and restaurants. Okay. Uh, the idea of hospitality is that it encompasses pretty much everything. It is the largest industry in the world, if right. you count all of the parts of it. You know, things as diverse as travel. Well, that's part of hospitality. Okay. Because you're still entertaining people while they're traveling from one spot to another. So culinary is just a part of hospitality. Culinary is a, yes, culinary is a part of it. It is a major right. part of it. If you look at the industry for the United States, if you say, okay, well, there's hotels and there's restaurants. Sure. Well, about 60% of its restaurants, about 40% of its hotels. Right. So it's actually, the food is a larger part sure. than the hotels. But you're still also talking about numbers. Right. You know, you, you remember how many hotels are in town. You probably couldn't count how many restaurants are in town. Right, exactly. So it's a difference in perception of, you know, what's the biggest part of it. Right, right. And then uh, with the changes with travel and everything else being included in hospitality, it then meant that it wasn't just a singular industry with one area. So it was much broader. So that's when we changed it in 96. Right. So um, what are some of the programs you offer, just like for students okay. of culinary? What are that's, some of the classes? Again, uh, starting out in 86, we had uh, hospitality management, or the hotel okay. and restaurant degree. That one has stayed the same through the years. It's primarily hotel-based. Okay. And uh, event planning is also a big part of that, so that people understand that you know events are a major factor in sure. hotels. Then in 2007, we added restaurant and culinary management, which was a diversion towards that larger part of the industry. Mm -hmm. Students were coming to us and saying, oh, I want to run a restaurant. I don't really want to learn how to work okay. in a hotel. So it created that degree at that point. Okay. And then it was about five years later in 2012 when we launched culinary arts and science, which is meant to be not just learning how to be a chef or a cook, but also the various uh, parts of the industry that you don't really think about much, right. food styling, Right. And food development, food science, where you're making food or making food for packaging. Okay, all sure. All those areas as well. Oh, fantastic. That's why we call it culinary arts and science, because it's not just culinary right. arts. Right, right. So um, some, of the, some of the classes that you offer then would be, like I, I know that we're going to be doing a part of it, which will be the art, food as art, right. correct? That's, so that's a pretty That's actually our, well, yeah, that's thing. actually, it's. Yeah. Uh, the program for that, that's the capstone course. In other words, like the culmination of everything you've done right. oh, okay. for the culinary arts degree. So since the degree only started in 2012, that only really started running in 2014 okay. and 15. Okay. So this is about probably the sixth or seventh time we've run it. All right. And uh, the students actually work their way through a gamut of different things from literally starting to look at food as art, not just, right. you know, I'm making a plate. Sure. I'm making a plate that looks beautiful. Right. And then they also do garde manger, which is cold kitchen. So pâtés and terrines, oh, okay. and also uh, hors d'oeuvres and canapés, those kind of things, making oh, small items. We do some photography in it so that they get used to the idea of what our food looks like outside of okay. the kitchen. And then the culmination of it all is a cake decorating contest. Okay. Now I think you folks are going to get a chance to look at a mini cake decorating contest, oh, right. which okay. is what you're going to see in, uh, later on in the show. Oh, very nice. 
uh, this is really just to pick out who's going to be the best in the class and give them an idea of what it's like to make the cakes. But their uh, final exam for the course is a three-tier cake. So it has to be you know, a smaller layer, a middle layer, and then a top layer, okay. all stacked together, whether they put decorations or anything, you know, right. risers between it or anything else is up to oh. them. Individually, they have to design it themselves. Great. Let's talk about the degree. Sure. So um, they, it would be an associate's degree, and you could actually use that degree to go out it's into an the... actually associate in applied oh. science. Oh, OK. An AAS. OK. Yes. So we're a little freer in terms of general education. OK. We don't require quite as many math history, you okay. know, right. <laughs> the classic So you courses. could, with that degree, you could either go out into the workforce or you could go on and get a four-year degree. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Right. Um, it's designed as a terminal degree. Associate in Applied Science literally means a two-year degree, you should be able to enter the industry. Right. Um, however, we have many, many students who then go to a four-year school either towards a more academic degree, mm -hmm. such as a bachelor's degree in business or something like that, mm -hmm. or a bachelor's in hospitality oh, okay. management. Sure. Uh, or we have students who go to a culinary institute, Johnson and Wales, All right. further on in their culinary studies. Oh, very good. And so I imagine a lot of students ask you for references to go on to those places, right? Absolutely, You're yeah. Probably... There's, uh, it's, it's become a very computerized system nowadays yes. for references, though. It's not like, you know, write me a letter. Oh, really? It's here's my link. Please go in right. here and fill out my form. Right. <laughs> what a fun job. Oh, it is. It really is. It's great. And the facility that you have here, tell us about the kitchens. How many sure. kitchens do you have? Uh, we only have one teaching kitchen at this point. Okay. Uh, we're hoping for more, but one at the moment. Uh, that was designed and built in about 2002 through 2004. Okay. Uh, previous to that, we had taught over at the Morris County School of Technology, so we were limited oh. in terms of right. when we could have classes. We could only do it in the evenings when right. there was no one else in the, kit, in the school. Uh, in uh, 2005, we really opened officially. And the kitchen is eight stations for two students each, and then an attached oh, nice. dining room that seats 56. Wow. What so a great one... facility. <laughs> well, thank you, Professor Cosgrove, uh, for coming in today. We're going to take a short break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be going to the teaching kitchen, where we'll get to watch the 2018 cake decorating contest. So please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Not all County College of Morris students look like me. Some look like me. Or me. Or me. Or me. We all come to CCM at different stages of life. And for different reasons. I plan to transfer to a university. I'm training for a new career as a nurse. But we all know one thing. CCM is where we want to be. So check out the website. Check out the website. Check out the website. And let CCM connect learning and your life. Jan Lamanji in the teaching kitchen. She is the kitchen coordinator here, and she's going to tell us a little bit about the equipment that's available to the students. Is that right? Yes. Hi. Um, there are eight stations here. They're equipped with eight Vulcan ranges. We have convection ovens in the back, and we have commercial kitchen aids uh, that the students can use. We usually have the, all the ingredients stuck in the walk-ins and the freezers. The students are able to use ingredients there that are not set up for other classes. Um, as you see, we usually hand them out the, all the ingredients that they're going to use for the class in the front row. Or here they just, you know, they use their own, their own equipment and they have to wash it, they have to take it back to the storage. And at, at the end of each class, at the end of each session, they have to clean and sanitize and hold the whole department. Right now. So where's your cake right now? Uh, I got it in the oven falling out because they're frozen. 
person beforehand. That way it's easier to cut so I don't cut myself. What temperature and for how long? I just have it at like 250. Pretty much gonna keep walking over there and get it until it's soft. I don't know what it's gonna take. Okay, and so you have heavy cream, sugar, and? That's it right now, just heavy cream and sugar. I'm gonna add food coloring to it later at three different stages to get three different colors out of it. Great, well, we will check back with you. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Mike, can you tell us about the cake that you're making? Right now, I'm just gonna try to keep it plain and simple. Right now, I stick with a plain buttercream frosting. Uh, maybe add some food dye, some uh, different stars, but um, for the most part, just keep it simple and uh, go from there. Is this something you've done before? Yes, it has. I've actually done this in an uh, advanced baking class that I've taken prior, and uh, I feel like that kind of gives me like, an upper hand, so I, I, I definitely feel confident going into this. So baking is kind of your thing, it's something that you would do? A little bit here and there, but grandma's taught me to, uh, to so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very good. So then you cut the top of the cake off? Is yes. that what you do? I, I cut it off, I uh, make it level, and then I'm actually going to flip it over so I get the nice even bottom to it. Put the buttercream and make it nice and smooth. All right, we'll check back with you. Yeah, thank thank you. you. And Keith, I see that you're making some kind of icing there. What kind of icing is that? Uh, it's just simple vanilla. Kind of just throw food coloring in. Maybe see if there's any fruit I like. Maybe strawberry or, you know, food coloring just to give it some more color and some more like, pop to it. Sprinkles. Sounds good. Now, do you like doing this kind of thing? I mean, I don't mind baking. I'm more of a cook. I, you know, because baking is more of like, you got to be very, very precise. Compared to cooking, you can kind of throw things in here and there. Like, oh, it needs a little more of that, a little more of that. Like, if, if you miss something in baking, you're kind of, you're really going to throw yourself off. But it's, it's, food. it's a little easier to go, oh, I just need a dash more of that or a pinch of that. So what do you like to make? Me? Uh, Spanish food, uh, Chinese. We had a really good Chinese cuisine class here. Uh, Italian, basically anything. I just like to cook. Oh, we'll check back with you and see how you're doing you. a little bit later. Appreciate it. Ted, I've noticed here that you're doing something just a little bit different than everyone else. Can you tell us what that is? So my plan is to have a buttercream frosting as the general frosting, but then I want to put dollops of meringue on top and torch those a bit so I get a bit of burned meringue on top. Oh, nice. And I see you also have vanilla and chocolate. Oh, yes. Uh, last week when we made the cakes, we kind of picked what we wanted, and I thought two-color cake might look nice. <laughs> so right now it's just setting up the ingredients. Um, I'm going to mix all this to make the buttercream frosting. If I can get a mix, I'll use a mix, but I can't always do that. Then the meringue will be separate, so it's time to warm up. Plus, I want to have the butter from the chill, and that's why I want to torch it so it doesn't melt. It's going to take a little bit of time, but it's mostly just getting everything put in the right steps. You got him back to like to torch your cake. She has a delicious chocolate cake. What kind of uh, what kind of frosting are you using? Do you find that's the easiest to work with? All right. Well, we're going to check back. I'm interested to see what this In this station, we have Carlos Arias. Can you tell us about how you made the lemon poppy seed cake? So basically, we do a basic vanilla yellow cake, which I would like. And I, you can, I basically, I did, I just added a little bit of lemon zest and then poppy seeds. And that's about it. Mine's pretty simple. I can go too far. I I'm, just, I'm getting all my stuff prepped, and then once it comes to uh, doing the whole frosting and decorating the cake, just do the whole I can't wait to check back with you and see how, how this looks when you're putting your finishing touches on it. Okay, okay here we are with Jillian DeMassey, and it looks like you're making a chocolate cake. Um, and what kind of frosting are you putting on? Uh, just a regular vanilla buttercream. I might add maybe a little sprinkles or like oil crumbles, kind of just whatever comes to mind in the process. Just whatever happens, happens. Do you like baking? Yeah, I like baking better than regular cooking. I think it just adds, like in order to decorate, it adds kind of, you have to be creative and kind of just understand the balance between the cake and the icing. All right, great. We'll check back with you. This station, is that a cookie? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Um, instead of going with the basic buttercream recipe, I went off my own because I really like shortening because it's like a good taste and a bit more fatting. So I went more moist towards like the buttercream for like that buttery taste and just added cookie crumbles to get that good cookie cream taste. That sounds delicious. And it looks like your cake, you, it looks like you have two different kinds of cake that you're working on. Yeah, I want to go for like a mixed plate, like more vanilla and half cookies and cream to get like a mix of both tastes. 
What's the balance of cookies that you would put in a cake? It mostly depends on how much is in there. Because right now I'm doubling the recipe I have because I might run out. So usually it's like for a regular portion of like 10 pulverized cookies. So it's not really too overwhelming. But like just right now. Do you make backup cakes in case you guys mess up these? Or is this your only cake? If you cut it wrong, that's it? And I uh, usually do backup just in case. Because if we like put too much icing, if it's like too slanted, we want a reassurance in case we don't have time to bake more. Alright, so you do one backup? Yeah. Alright, great. We'll come back and see your finishing touches. Right now, the line is like for it. So, go behind everybody else. I should be alright. That's okay. That's one of those things that happens, right? Yes. The equipment. So can I ask you what you do with your buttercream that might be different than what someone else would do? Pretty much doing the standardized recipe. Really didn't think it through last night. So I'm using whatever professor did. Well, that's probably a safe bet then, yeah. right? <laughs> All right. All right, looks very good. Thank you. Now we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to see how these cakes are going. Not all County College of Morris students look like me. Some look like me. Or me. Or me. Or me. We all come to CCM at different stages of life. And for different reasons. I plan to transfer to a university. I'm training for a new career as a nurse. But we all know one thing. CCM is where we want to be. So check out the website. Check out the website. Check out the website. And let CCM connect learning and your life. second one that's done. It looks absolutely delicious. You. you want to tell us if you achieved kind of yes. your goal? Okay, so I was kind of going more of like a how I feel as I go kind of thing. So it starts off with a uh, white cake and I, I went for a um, maple, walnut, uh, kind of like a buttercream. And then I, I coated the outside with almonds and then I actually used food dye and color to kind of go with the theme of the brown cake with the nuts and the maple. So then I took brown food dye and I put it in the rest of the buttercream that I had and I put it around the top. Kind of iffy on the top, but I'm, overall I'm kind of glad how the rest of the cake turned out. So it's a good yeah, practice. Yeah, and do it in the you should thing. be very proud of yourself. It looks delicious. Thank you. Ted's torching his cake. I use a meringue. It's kind of similar to toasting. I use a meringue, so it's kind of similar to toasting a marshmallow. So that's why it's turning that nice golden brown color. I'm just going to do spots to go with the pattern of the uh, mix match spots. <laughs> It oh, smells so good. It smells just like a roasted marshmallow. So the, the meringue is just um, egg white and confectioner sugar. That's where that uh, smell is coming from. It's, it is really just in the marshmallow. So, yeah. That is a really fun cake. Carlos is putting the finishing touches. He's got a three minute countdown. Sweating, sweating, <laughs> trying to get this done, almost done, done. Oh, fantastic. It looks like you glazed and candied those uh, those yeah. lemons. That's exactly what I did. I just candied lemons, put them in the oven, put them in the sugar, 15 minutes, 250. But instead of boiling the whole water and all that nonsense. Just about a minute to go, I think, so we'll let it <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 
Now step back. Let's hear what your take is. Shall we start with number one? So we accidentally switched spots, but anyway, so my cake is just basic chocolate and vanilla cake, and the frosting is on the inside a buttercream frosting. For the outside layer, I made a simple French meringue and just poured it over, so it made like a almost like a glazed cake. Uh, then I took some other buttercream that I had dyed, kind of go for a tie dye theme, came out more party-ish, and then I uh, used some more meringue, scooped that on, and then torched it so it looks a bit more like a toasted marshmallow. With Very some nice. Okay. Very nice. Number one slash two. This. This is a Philly special. It's, uh, <laughs> ah, I see. The Philly the Super Bowl. It's going to be hear, a train wreck. I hear Today, the parade's getting messy. Yeah, yeah. So this is the train wreck representing <laughs> Philadelphia. Great. <laughs> Just a simple butter uh, that uh, butter recipe gave me. Came out a little thick. It's a little bit thick, but next time I'll be fine. I bet okay. it tastes great. Yes. <laughs> Next up. All right. We did a simple funfetti cake. Threw it. It's a simple buttercream. Threw in some of the excess cake batter. Took okay. a little extra cake on top. Nice. Next All right. Up. So over here we have a maple walnut buttercream frosting, which which is around the cake with walnuts in it as well. And then I took the rest of my maple buttercream frosting and I dyed it with brown food dye and I lined the top around it and then I masked the side of it with crushed almonds. Very nice. Next. Okay. Uh, I made a cookies and cream cake. I colored the buttercream with the red to make more of a maroon color to match the school colors. I surrounded it with some Oreos and topped it with the rest of the crumbs I had. Put some marshmallows for the height and I added a little chocolate drizzle to make it more appealing. Very nice. Alright, so I have a chocolate cake with a caramel walnut filling and then it's iced with a regular buttercream icing and then has caramel drizzle, chopped walnuts, and I lemon poppy seed cake, and it's filled with raspberries. And on the outside has a bunch of poppy seeds, candied lemons, and then just some raspberries on top. With the cream cheese okay. frosting. <laughs> um, it's a chocolate peppermint cake with a fruit buttercream in the middle. Try to the buttercream. What's, what's the theme? The theme is basically blackberry rice, and it's one of the shops called a broken. Okay. And, yeah. Thank you. Cake. I tried covering the whole thing in chocolate and having it right now. prepping them for any Master Chef show that they might ever want to get yeah, at. Master Chef, that would be great. That would be great. Well, I think they did a really good job considering that they had to contend with us in here and uh, uh, recording. Good. Well, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you all for uh, coming by. Thank you for joining us today. This has been a lot of fun. I hope we do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>